Biden will address the assembly sometime tomorrow with the war in Ukraine expected to take center stage. Florida Congressman Michael Waltz here with me now to react. Great to see you in the flesh in person, sir. Good what do we you. need to hear from President Biden? Well, first, I think it's what we don't need to hear, and we don't need any more gaffes or any more kind of policy variations that then as staff has to come in and clean up. Whenever we have that, it further undermines the presidency. It further undermines the U.S. on the national stage. We remember when he went to Poland and then it was clean up on aisle nine uh, from, from that speech. But secondly, it, it, we need some clarity in terms of Russia. Uh, their uh, sanctions regime I don't think is working very well. China is stepping in to replace everything that the Europe's aren't the Europeans aren't buying with Russia. Uh, and we're on the verge of an economic crisis in Europe with Russia turning off the gas. What I'd love to hear that I know we're not going to hear is a reassertion of an American energy policy uh, and the export of American LNG and cleaner forms of gas uh, rather than going to Venezuela, Iran, uh, and, and other forms, other dictatorships for their energy. We've got it right here in America. Don't think we're going to hear that, right. but I would love to. Finally, calling out Putin for the monster that he is. Uh, we're seeing war crime after war crime after war crime uncovered as the Ukrainians liberate these towns, mass graves, torture centers. And Putin, in response, just this week, bombed a dam uh, that destroyed the electricity in that part of Ukraine, bombed another power station, continues to bomb civilian infrastructure and be the war criminal that he is. China's Xi Jinping will not be in attendance at the General Assembly. But of course, China always front of mind these days. Here's what the president said about whether or not U.S. troops would fight to defend Taiwan if China invades. Take a listen. Yeah. Taiwan makes their own judgments about their independence. We are not moving. We're not encouraging their being independent. We're not led. That's their decision. But would U.S. forces defend the island? Yes, if in fact there was an unprecedented attack. But of course, the White House then walking this back again. This keeps happening. Here's what they said this time. The president has said this before, including in Tokyo earlier this year. He also made clear then that our policy for Taiwan has not changed. Can the president ever make up for this inconsistency, inconsistency when he says one thing and then like clockwork, yeah. his administration needs to walk back because he with the exact opposite thing? Yeah. Well, it, it leads the entire country, heck, the entire world to wondering who's in charge, who's writing the teleprompter. We see why now Biden has gone so long without having an interview because the staff doesn't want him to because he goes off script. Look, in this case, I actually agree with him that we do need to be very clear to the Chinese uh, from a deterrent standpoint uh, that they can't just take Taiwan. And why is it so important? Half the world's shipping, 90 percent of the world's largest shipping flows through the Taiwan Strait. That's the economies of Japan, South Korea. It's about half the world's GDP that if they take Taiwan, the Chi Chinese will control. Uh, so at the same time, though, we have Biden giving us defense cuts. And at the same time, we have our military about to kick out 20,000 National Guardsmen over the vaccine. Apparently, they didn't get the memo from that same interview that the pandemic is over. Congressman, you are a student of history. You are a student of war strategy. You're also a student of our world and how it operates in the current day and age. In the end, will China end up invading Taiwan in light of where we are in 2022 and in light of what they saw with regard to Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine? Chairman Xi of China, who's about to get reelected this fall for an unprecedented third term, is telling his country to prepare for war, has instructed his military to be prepared to defeat the U.S. military by 2027, which is actually accelerating. Their Navy is larger than ours. Their Space Force is larger than ours. And he is, if you just read his speeches, talking about becoming the world superpower, not a world superpower, the world superpower. And the biggest weapon they have actually isn't militarily, it's economic. They're waiting on us to go off that fiscal cliff and bankrupt ourselves so that we can't uh, be able to compete anymore. So I believe the next president very well could be a wartime president. I personally don't want that to be Joe Biden. God help us all. And that's scary stuff, regardless of who the president is. Are we prepared to prevent them from taking the number one mantle? Or are we, are we confident to say we're going to win on pronouns? We don't yep. really care about winning the battles. <laughs> we've got to bring that. First things first, we've got to bring those supply chains back home. 
Right now, the Chinese can turn off our pharmaceuticals. They can turn off our antibiotics. They can turn off our lithium that right. the left wants to take us into an all green economy. The Chinese control the solar panels, the wind turbines and and the basic it's materials chilling. like uh, that's what we have to win economically. And right now, America's drunk on Chinese money. We got to get off of it. Congressman Michael Waltz, thank you for being here. We right. appreciate it.